Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to your next day in the C programming language. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at a particular type of variable, and that is a static variable. Now you might have seen this pop up when looking through the C libraries or maybe in just some code that you've seen written in the C language and wondering what exactly static is. So in this lesson, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive and really understand that static is about the lifetime of our variables. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So what I've got here is just our simple hello world program. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just write a little function here. And it's just going to be called function. And I'm just going to leave it essentially blank here. And it's just going to return the value zero here. So let's just go ahead and create a loop here for int i equals zero. And let's just go ahead and within this uh, loop here, call this function 10 times. So I'll just keep calling this every time here. And what I'm going to do here is compile this program and just to make sure it works and no errors. OK, so nothing revolutionary at this point here. So what work are we actually going to do within this function? Well, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just create a variable here called i. And I'm going to assign it to 0 here. And then I'm just going to print off the value of i. So let's just go ahead and do that each line here. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and compile so you can see it's a valid program. And I'll go ahead and run the program. But before I run it, go ahead and make your prediction as to what this program is going to print. All right, so pause the video if you need. And in three, two, one, I'm going to go ahead and run it. And 0 just as you'd expect. So some of the things, again, that we've talked about is the scope of i, for instance, is within this function here. These curly braces here define the block scope. So i is essentially just a local variable to this function. It'll get allocated every time we call this function and then automatically removed from the stack when we leave this function. Now, sometimes we actually don't want that to happen. We want a variable to be longer lived. So one option that we could do is maybe make a global variable somewhere else in our program. And we could use malloc so it's on the heap, and then it'll live until we explicitly call free. OK, so we've talked a little bit about memory management in this series. But another option that you have is to actually extend the lifetime of this variable using the static keyword. And again, you can imagine static as sort of staying, staying forever. And that is exactly the right way to think about this. So let's go ahead and rerun this program here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is, well, we get the same result, is I'm going to modify i here. So I'm going to actually just increment i every time here. So I'll do i plus plus here. So that every time that we run this program, i increments every time that function is called here. And let me go ahead and um, just put everything so you can see it on the screen here. And we'll recompile and rerun here. Now, before I rerun here, let me go ahead and put you through the same sort of experiment and ask you, what is this going to print? Now, the caveat I'll give you is with just understanding how static works. So static, again, means that this variable will be initialized exactly one time. The first time that it's called, it'll be set to 0. But then after that, any subsequent times that we call this function, i's value is preserved. So I'll let you think about that and think about how function is called in this loop. And in three, two, one, hopefully you pause the video to think about this. Here's our result here. So now we actually get i's printing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is pretty cool. So i again preserves its value in function here. Now, if I try to use this particular variable i, and I'm actually going to uh, give it a little bit of a distinguishment because sometimes static variables have, uh, I'll, I'll put an s in an underscore just so we know. So let's just go ahead and um, add some uh, clarifying uh, a better name for that variable. Um, again, here is that static variable running and incrementing. Now, the question that I want to ask you is, what is the actual scope of i? here, or the s underscore i here. Well, if I try to use s i here, and I'll just go ahead and let's go ahead and just try after this function. So s i equals 11. Well, let's go ahead and try to run this. Well, again, s of i is still undeclared. So again, it's important for you to understand that the scope of this static variable here is still within this function. We can't use it anywhere outside of the scope where it is. Now, as a bonus here, again, you can put static in front of any other type of variable here. So let's just say I had some other integer here called global equals 
100. Well, I could actually make this a static int here, and this would be a global variable, meaning I could call it in function or in main or anywhere in my code, but the scope is limited to just this file here, just this main.c file on the left of my screen. So if I have multiple files and wanted to use this variable, static is a way to make my code just a little bit safer by limiting the scope if you must have some sort of global state here. Now, what I want to go ahead and show you at this point is something that I think is well, interesting just about how static works. And this is getting a little bit into the sort of more uh, advanced stuff here. So let me go ahead and just get rid of this and leave our program here. But you might be wondering where exactly does this static variable live? Because we've talked about stack memory that is sort of automatically managed. We've talked a little bit about heap memory with malloc and free, but where does the static memory actually exist? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is recompile our program here. I'm going to do dash G so we get debugging symbols and just a little bit more information here. And if you're on a Linux system, you can follow along. If you're on Mac, there's other tools like OTool and Windows, the same. Uh, but I'm going to use a tool called Objdub. And just to go ahead and take a look at the uh, manual page here, you'll see that it's a tool for displaying information from object files. So an example of an object file would be prog that we've been running, for instance. I'm going to run objump, and one of the flags that we can use is dash t, and that'll give me the symbol table. So that'll essentially tell me what symbols are in this executable here. So let me go ahead and hit that, and you're going to see a bunch of stuff that probably looks a little bit foreign to you. And actually, let me um, make this just a little bit bigger here, and I'll rerun the tool. And let's make this fit on the screen a little bit nicer, and even a little bit nicer here. But what you're going to see here is all of the individual uh, variables that are actually in our program here. Some of them you might actually see that look familiar here, like main.c here. And you'll even see the main symbol here. And it's got some other information about it. If it's got an f next to it, that means it's a function. So we know we have the main function, which is over here. We've got something that's, well, it's a little bit poorly named. It's called function, but that's also a function which corresponds to our actual code here. Now, again, the point that I want to show you, though, is if you look carefully enough through this, you'll notice that there is something actually called s underscore i here, and it's got a dot zero, which is something the compiler added to it. But you can actually see that this static variable here, that's the one in function, is actually stored in our executable. So if we had a bunch of static variables, we would be able to find them here. And they're typically located in some sort of section in our actual executable, which is a little bit beyond the series of this uh, video or the scope of this series in general, but it's in something called the BSS section. So let's just go ahead and do a little experiment here. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just create a bunch of static variables. I'm going to make them uh, ABC here. And let's just create another one called uh, X, Y, Z. Just some things that will sort of stand out. So when I recompile our program, rerun this tool objdump. And if we look here, you'll see that ABC, XYZ, and our static variable here, and they've got little labels assigned to them automatically, are automatically stored in our program uh, in the actual executable. So that's how we have access to them. That's how they can persist forever in this function. So anyways, I hope that's just a fun thing for you to know and just to, again, gain some intuition about how static variables work. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you learned something new about static in the C programming language. It's, again, a useful tool if you need information to persist or some state to persist within a function. So you might want to call how many times the function's called, or say if you have a random number generator, sort of keep track of which number that you are generating so you can get the next random number each time, again, without having to expose global variables throughout your program. All right, folks, so if you found that helpful, make sure that you give a big like here, comment below if something wasn't clear or you just want to talk more about static. I'd be happy to hear your thoughts here and make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss the next lesson in this series or in any of the other series I have. And we'll see you soon. Take care.